to Meyer Games, and I am so excited to bring to you the 40th live play of Rolling Realms. Uh, we've been doing this for a year now, I think, about a year, and uh, I've had a blast with it. So thank you so much for joining me, whether you join me live or you join me on YouTube later. I really appreciate it. I've had a lot of fun with it. So I decided to do something special for this game, and I invited people to suggest fan-created realms that they either made and then were particularly proud of or that they uh, that they had heard of and that they really enjoyed playing. And so I selected nine of them. These are nine realms that uh, for games that we are not currently publishing realms for. Um, they're each from a different creator. And they... Uh, and I thought they were clear enough to play. Like, there are some great ones out there where I kind of read through them and I was like, I can't quite figure this out and I don't want to stumble through it live. I still probably will stumble through it a little bit. Um, and my lighting in here is very poor today. I might need to turn on the light. Hopefully this will be okay. Well, let's see how that goes. I get some flickering on the camera when I have lights on, but I think I need to be able to read these today. So, uh, and here's Chad joining us. So today I have Meadow, Glenmore 2, and Survivor, based off the TV show Survivor that I love, the finale of which happens to be tonight for the current season. So let's go over those. Oh, and also in the description of this video, you can go online onto Dropbox and print this out. Um, just download it and print it out, and you should be able to play along live. Uh, you don't actually don't even need Rolling Realms to play today. Um, I have the dice, you just need a pen and this. So, uh, I'm not going to hold up the screen while I read it because I need to read through here's these. In Meadow, we're going to write a number 1 through 4 on a fence post. Then we'll cross off a card that's that many spaces away from the Meadow. Uh, I see Corel and Chad, join, another Chad, two Chads, joining me today. For Meadow, then we'll cross off the corresponding card in your Meadow from, uh, from bottom to top. I can use a 5 or 6 to collect a Discovery. And Discovery is... Uh, give you some special bonuses. I'll read over these again once I actually start to use them. Uh, here's Matt. Uh, Matt, I, did, I don't have a realm from Matt here today. Matt has created many re fan realms. And Matt, I didn't select one of yours because we've actually published a few of yours or are planning to publish a few of them. Uh, but thank you so much for, um, for contributing to the Rolling Realms universe. And I also see Nathan here. Nathan, uh, I've talked about Nathan's realm, Meadow, right now, actually. Uh, we'll get stars from uh, resources from Crossed Off Meadow and Discovery Cards. Pretty intuitive. Yeah. Then Glenmore 2, designed by Jeff Putnam. Outline a tile that is orthogonally adjacent to any previously outlined tile. Kind of like placing a tile in uh, Glenmore 2. Here's Jeff just joining the comments here. And, uh, and gain the benefit of the tile and all adjacent, including diagonal outline tiles. Yeah, that's, that's exactly like Glenmore 2. Score stars when activating a tile with that benefit. So there, there, there are tiles that have stars on them. That makes sense? And last, we have Survivor from Luke Allison. We'll see if Luke pops in today. Uh, in Survivor, we're going to either use a number to snuff out a torch or sway the jury. A juror must, must have their torch snuffed before they are swayed. So kind of like in Survivor, you have to vote someone out and then sway them to actually vote for you at the end of the game. You may snuff and sway if a pair is rolled. That's handy. Um, and the number used must be greater than or equal to the juror's number. We'll score stars as indicated here on this chart. We'll score one star also if all torches are snuffed. And then we'll score two stars if you sway a majority of the juror members. So four, five, or six are enough to sway them. Here they are once again. And we will jump in and give these a try. All right. First roll. We have a six and a four, a six and a four. So let's play along here, or play around here. So I, I remember in Meadow, I can use a five or a six to collect a discovery. Discoveries have a lot of benefits here. So I think I will use that six right here in Meadow to get one of each resource, some early resource gain. Glenmore two, I might, I might try to do a little bit of everything here. Um, Okay, yeah, so Glenmore 2, I could I could outline a 1, but I won't gain anything right away if I do that. But it will give me access to a 5 later. So, what should I do? Uh, I'm thinking the one, the one would be a, a 1 value die. 4, so for 4 for Survivor, um, I can't snuff 
no, I, I can't sway yet because I need to snuff first. So I could snuff the number four uh, jury uh, participant, competitor, the jury, can snuff their torch so that later I could sway them. Hmm. You know, I think I will use the four in Glenmore Chronicles right here. And that box doesn't have any benefits, so I don't gain anything right away. And then I will use a one value die in Survivor to snuff number one's torch and gain another coin. Another fan creator here, uh, Mark, is is just popped in, just woke up to join us for this. This is awesome. I love I love seeing all these fan realm creators here in the comments. All right, roll number two. We have a one and a four. Two of the numbers that I used last turn, a one and a four. So I'd like to use Meadow for, for the other purposes of using Meadow. I have a one over here I could use. Let's put that one or that four over in Meadow. And so what do I want to get out of Meadow? What would I love early in the game? I don't really want stars yet, but I would love some resources. Here's a coin I could get if I can get a flower. So I'm going to put a four right here and that cross off and cross off a card that many spaces. So I cross off this card because that's four spaces away from the four. That makes sense. And I'm gaining this benefit. Oh, I see. So I'm not actually crossing off the benefits. I can gain the benefits multiple times. That's really cool. Great job, Nathan, with that meadow design. And then the one. Yeah, I wanted to use the one in Glenmore Chronicles. I'll put that right there and gain a heart. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything here. Outline a tile, gain the benefits. Yep. Very clean and clear. Good job, Jeff, with that design. And then I could snuff out juror number two's torch, or I could sway the jury, actually, because I, I could create another one here. I can snuff and sw uh, the number, so I can, sw I can snuff now, and I can sway now that I've snuffed. So I'll create a one value die, and I will sway juror number one. So I will sway them over to my side. Car Carell says, I don't think you can get the benefits multiple times in Meadow. You cross off the entire card. So I've crossed off the card, but not the... Um, cross off the corresponding card in your Meadow from top to bottom. Let's see. Cross off a card that many spaces away from the number. Cross off the corresponding card in your Meadow from bottom to top. Oh, I see. Okay, so there's only... From bottom to top. Okay, you're right. So, I am using that card. I've used the leaf, the first leaf card. And so that means there are, it appears, and Nathan, correct me if I'm wrong, so I've crossed off a leaf benefit there, and so that is the only leaf benefit that I can use. And Nathan clarified, so meadow, you cross off the metal card to build up to the top as it's written now. Cool. Okay. Sorry for misunderstanding that. It, it is clear now. Okay. Turn three. A six and a two. Six and a two. All right, let's get Glenmore, including diagonal. Oh, nice. Okay, so for Glenmore, let's use the six right here to gain a star. And that also gains a diagonal outline benefit, so I gain another heart. As for a two, I see a minute. Okay, so I'm building up some of those bigger payoffs. Let's see if I can get this little shape with a two. I can. So let's use a two right here, cross off that shape, cross that off, and get a star. Oh, and now I'm back in Survivor. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll use, I'm gonna use three hearts to copy the six and snuff the torch of contestant number six over here to gain a star. Okay, that's clear. These are, these are flowing well. Great designs all around. I'm really impressed with these. Turn four. Six and a four. So we've seen a lot of the same numbers that we've not seen a five or a three yet. Six and a four. A lot of flexibility of what I can do with Meadow with those numbers. I love the flexibility of that. Uh, in Glenmore two, I do have a six I could cross off there. Or uh, four would be, I don't know if I have a four to cross off. I could do a six there, and I could do a four over here. Yeah, let's put the six 
right here in Glenmore 2. I won't gain any benefits from that. The 4, oh, I could have used the 6 and the Survivor too. That would have been good. But I'll go ahead and use the 4 to snuff this Survivor's Torch and gain a Pumpkin. And I can create a 1 value die here. And I kind of want this Beetle. How can I get that Beetle? Yeah, okay. I'll create a 1 value die. Put a 1 right here. Cross off that Beetle. Get the Beetle right there. And gain another pumpkin. I'm doing that because I like this. This first column in Meadow works me towards two stars. I'm kind of working my way up to that. There's a star down here, a discovery star that I want to get with a five or a six. Yeah, so far so good. All right, turn five. A five and a one. We finally see a five. Five and a one. So I need an owl. So I need a two. I need a two to get that owl. So I won't worry about the owl right now. I could use the five to get this star though, and that might be a good call. Yeah, let's use... I might be a little early for that though, because I might need a five elsewhere. In fact, I know I need a five for this survivor. Let's put the five right here. Snuff another torch. I'm snuffing torches left and right here. And with the one, I actually could use the one in the in the meadow. I could change it to a two. I won't be creating an extra die this turn unless I can get that two. Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Let's turn that one into a two and put it right, uh, sorry, right here. Cross off that owl, cross off this owl and gain two stars. Maybe a little early to be getting stars, but it feels good, so I'm going for it. Okay, turn six, a five and a two. Now the fives are coming up all over the place. Five and a two. Oh, I, could, I should have waited on that too. Um, so I have enough torches crossed off to, uh, to sway the jury, although I'd love to get this three crossed off too. And I have a five over here that I'd like to use. I'm falling behind a little in Glenmore because I, I'm a little stuck. I need threes to continue to expand where I really want to expand. And I'm not getting threes, but I could turn that two into a three and it might be worth it. Hmm. What to do there? All right, let's turn that two into a three. We'll see how it goes. Two becomes a three right there. The benefit I get is a pumpkin and a star. And then the five I'm going to use down here as a discovery to get a star and a pumpkin. All right. How are you all doing so far? You've gone quiet. I think you've gone quiet into strategy mode here, but let me know how you're doing so far. Uh, through six turns, I have seven stars. Although what matters is what you have at the end of the game or the end of the round. Five and a three. Now the fives are coming up all over the place. This is our first three. If I had known, I would have waited for that. Uh, but the, I have the three now. I need to get to that two somehow. That could be one way to do it. What else do I need over here? I need to get one of these little guys. That could be a three and the five. Yeah, let's do that. Let's put a three right here and get this little lotus. That's another star. And uh, so that was the three. And now the five I want to put over here. I'm going to sway juror number five and get a star out of it. Get to sc score a star if all torches are snuffed. Okay, so I'm still incentivized to snuff all those torches, even if, uh, even if I don't sway, even though I don't need to sway them. Nathan says he thinks he made some tactical errors in Survivor. Uh, Corel says not playing realms you know by heart is hard. Yeah, and Chad says every time I see a new realm, I get quiet, uh, thinking about the best strategy. All right, I, I can't. I still don't have any other hearts or coins. And so I can't create any new dice this turn. So let's move on to turn eight. A five and a one. I'm so close in Meadow to getting all six stars. So I may go for that. Fall behind a Glenmore too. 
But sometimes you have to give up on, on certain realms. Five does not help us in Survivor. The one doesn't really help us either. Might go for the two there. Um, but let's see if I can get a two. I need that beetle. Yeah. Let's use the two. We'll put the two right here. Two will get us that beetle. Gives us a heart. And the five I'll put over in Glenmore too. I'll put that five right here, which gives me a pumpkin. Lots of pumpkins left. All right, so the final roll. <laughs> yeah, Walter is. Walter is right behind me there. Hey, Walter. Um, for the final roll, what am I hoping for? I would love to get another beetle. So I need another two to get a beetle. That would be a star. And then I need, I need to snuff one more torch. So I need a four or a six. I think those are the key numbers for me. Let's see how we do with the final roll. Got a four, didn't get a two, but got a four and a five. A four and a five. The four works for Survivor, certainly. So here is a four to get that heart. And I'll wait to do the rest of the Survivor scoring at the end of the game. So I won't snuff all the torches, but I will end up, uh, I do have the majority. I've swayed half of the jury, which is what I needed to sway them. So that is worth two stars. That feels really good. So I'll, I'll just mark it now. I'm, I'm getting two stars for swaying the jury in Survivor. Um, and now I have the five to use. So I could use it in Meadow, which will let me copy a number and then use it in Glenmore too. Is that worth it? So I'm not getting a star out of the number in Meadow. So it's probably worth it to just, uh, yeah, actually, I don't know if I can get a star from Glenn Moore either. I would have to manipulate a number pretty far to get it. So I don't think I'll activate Glenn Moore in my final turn. Instead, I will use that five to get, well, let's see, actually. Get, use that five to get a, a coin and a heart. And that might actually change things. Because here's a star in Glenmore. So I can use that coin and two pumpkins to create a, a, a two or get a two. That gives me a star, but I have to spend a resource here to do so. So I'll spend a, a heart to do so. And when I also get a pumpkin when I do that. Pretty cool. All right. So my final score, let's see. Uh, Corral says that they got a 12.2. I have, a, I have a 12 as well, a 12.5, and I think that's it. Yeah, so let's look over these. Let's, let's evaluate. Um, so Meadow over here, Meadow, uh, Meadow I would say, say that Meadow felt good throughout the round. I'm going to scoot my chair up a little bit so I can be a little closer. So Meadow felt really good throughout the round. There was, there was all, almost always something I could do there thanks to this chart, the flexibility of this chart and the discovery bonuses down there. So Nathan, I think you did a great job of this. I always felt like I had an option. There were times where I needed a specific number, but that was really mostly at the end of the round. Tilt the camera up there a little bit. Um, so I really like this Meadow design. And the only thing that I might add is something to show, uh, something visual to show over here that I'm going from top, uh, from bottom to top. Um, in this, uh, within these cards. Just a little reminder there. Glenmore too. I, I love the idea behind this realm, Jeff. This is really, really cool. Um, it felt a little tight. Uh, and, and maybe, obviously, I, you know, I've only played it once. I need to play it more often to see if I can branch out there. But I think it probably would have felt a little better to have some benefits in uh, these, these starting boxes. Uh, just so I can get a benefit early in the game. So I would I would lean towards trying it, making it a little bit more generous and putting benefits in the currently empty boxes to see how that works out. I'm sure you've played it multiple times and found that maybe that is is too generous. But um, I don't know, something to, something to think about, something to try over there. But I, I love how well this resembles the tile placement in Glenmore. Really well well done there. And then Survivor. Survivor was really fun. I think uh, it would be, it's going to be pretty difficult in Survivor to get the full, um, the full six stars, but I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing because it's it's pretty easy to uh, to do things in Survivor. Um, There's generally something I could do in that realm, which which I liked. Yeah, and it and it, and it mimics mimics the idea of snuffing torches and swaying the jury really well from the game. 
yeah, I had a lot of fun with these. I'm really impressed with what you all did. Uh, Nathan, Jeff, and Luke, thank you so much for contributing these to this game 40. I had a blast. And looks like we're getting some scores here. Chad had 12.2. Corel had 12.2. Nathan had a 12.1. And uh, chat says, being able to duplicate benefits is interesting. I had one less square in Glenmore than Jamie, but got one of those stars three times and the other two times. Yeah, that is really cool. But, uh, so the order of the, the squares really does make a difference there, depending on um, which benefits you get. So yeah, thank you all for, for uh, contributing these. I look forward to playing round two and three, but we're off to a great start, I think, in round one. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.